All right. Hi. We are still in, this is unit seven, but it's really unit eight, applications of the integral. And so we are looking at disks and washers. We've done disks. We did disks yesterday. Today we're going to focus on washers, but they are very, very much related. So we will be able to use integrals to find the volume of a solid of revolution. So here's my washer method. If the area beneath a function is rotated in three dimensions and the resulting solid holes or gaps like a donut, then use the washer method. Think of it like finding the volume for a jack-o'-lantern. You would find the outer, outer volume of the pumpkin, then subtract the volume of the hollowed out space. You would be left with just the volume of the pumpkin. So the formula is given by volume equals pi from e to b, capital R squared minus lowercase r squared dx, where capital R is the outer radius and lowercase r is the inner radius. So I have this 3D picture over here on the right. This would be, let's switch to a lighter color. This would be lowercase r, and then capital R would go all the way to the outside. Um, if you've been following my videos and still doing the stick figures, now I'm gonna have two stick figures. But I also happen to have some 3D models, thank you Tech Ed, of what our washers would look like. So your washer has an outside radius and an inside radius. So I've got a whole stack of them here. Here are my washers all lined up you can see. So what you're doing is you're finding the volume of the outside with that capital R and then the volume of the inside with the lowercase r and subtracting them. And just like we said yesterday or in the last lesson, it's the um, volume of the cylinder. So this is, let's come down here, volume equals pi r squared h. This time we've got two of them. So it's the outside minus the inside. Now, if you notice the pi and the h are the same, so you can factor those out. So I'm gonna factor the pi h out. You've got r squared minus r squared. And then h is that thickness. These are so thin, it's dx. So volume is pi from a to b, don't mind my sloppy handwriting here, r squared minus r squared dx. That's where the formula comes from. So they're really just cylindrical formulas. Now this is, the left over of the inside here. This kind of looks like a set of discs. Discs do not have a hole. Washers have a hole. Those have in different inside radii. This one, the cell has the same inside radius. Same idea though. So these are all washers and they get stacked up on top of one another. All right, example one, let's jump right in. Find, oh, by the way, I had a conversation um, earlier today. What, how do I know what direction these go? How do I know if they're vertical or horizontal? For any of your volume problems, it has to be stated somewhere in the problem. Something to be based off of. We are perpendicular to the axis of rotation when we discuss disks and washers. So in example one, it says about the x-axis. So if you're going around the x-axis, it's perpendicular to the x-axis, that makes this a dx problem. So find the volume generated by revolving the area bounded by square root of x plus one, which is your square root curve, which is shifted up one. That's this. x equals four is a vertical line at four. Uh, y equals one is a horizontal line at one. And this whole thing is being revolved around the x-axis. So we're taking this shaded region and revolving it around the x-axis. So before we get there, what's this gonna look like? Well, it's going to be kind of reflected down here. You have this other piece. If you cut it in half, that's kind of what it looks like. Three-dimensionally, you have the circle here the inside would be a cylinder and then the outside is kind of this cone shape or a funnel shape. These are rough on the board. This is really rough on an iPad. Um, so it's kind of like a quaint that's got a, a inside edge. This one actually was pretty close to this shape. If I got rid of the inside peg. Here's my 3D shape. I guess I need to go in this direction. There's my 3D shape. All right, so volume, let's grab our formula, is pi from A to B, 
capital R squared minus lower R, lowercase r squared. And these are perpendicular to the axis of rotation in my partitions. So they look like this. So because they're vertical partitions, this is a dx problem. So all those variables inside need to be in terms of x. Now, let's talk about a and b. A and B are where the first and last slices are. So where's your first slice? It's actually, let's switch colors. It's actually over here. I start at the y-axis. The equation of the y-axis is x equals zero. I know that seems backwards, but it is zero. And then where's the last slice? The last slice is over here at four, so zero, four. Now, capital R squared is if I go with my stick figures, there's the outside where his head is up to the parabola and the feet are on the X axis. And if I have an inside one, it looks like this. Got a little, little friend, shorter friend. So we're gonna do this with two. So the head of the first one is at square root of X plus one where are the feet? The feet are at zero. Now that shorter one, where's the head? At one, where are the feet? At zero. We're going to subtract both of these and it's a dx problem. So I know this is an expanded form. I've written out every single possible piece. The other thing that I want you to be aware of is the feet are in the same place. They're both at zero. They're both right here on the x-axis. And that makes sense. If I have a washer, the inside radius, they both come to the center right here. That's exactly the way it should be. Now, if I go to put this into my calculator, this is a little clumsy. So zero to four, square root of x plus one quantity squared. One minus zero is just one and then one squared, something like this. So now I'm going to jump into my calculator with math nine. Jacob, would you pass me my gray calculator, buddy? Yeah. Gray calculator. Oh. Sorry, forgot my calculator. Jake, I need my calculator. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. All right, so let's do math nine. Math nine is square root of x plus one squared minus one comma x comma zero comma four. Now, remember mine has commas like an older 83. Yours is nicer, but what do I have? 18.6 repeating most likely. Okay, so that's with the pi. And if I multiply it by pi, 58.643, there's my volume. All right, that's a washer problem. Basically you have two disks. Now, example two, find the volume generated by revolving y equals the square root of x plus one, x equals four, y equals one, about the y axis. So same shaded figure, but this time we're gonna rotate in the other direction. So I'm gonna use the same colors. Square root of x plus one, x equals four, y equals one. Still have this shaded region, but this time we're rotating around the y-axis. So if I rotate around the y-axis for here, remember you're perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So these are sideways. So this is not a dx problem anymore. This is a dy problem. So the volume is pi from a to b, r squared minus r squared dy, dy. So everything has to be in terms of y on the inside. Okay, so a and b, let's talk about a and b. A is where the first slice is all the way down here. So where's the first slice? It's at one. 
and B is all the way up here. Now, according to my graph, it kind of looks like a four, but I don't know that that's 100% accurate. Um, you want to actually set them equal to each other or put the value in to know for sure. So let's see if we can tell where they intersect right here. So I'm going to put X equals four and for this one. So Y equals the square root of four plus one. Y equals two plus one, which is a three. So that ordered pair is four, three. So my picture is not 100% accurate. So my last piece, my last slice is up here at three. Now, radii. This is Charlie and our crazy stick figures. So here is one of them, head minus feet, goes to the outside edge. And then there's a little friend in that blank space like this, there's your blank space. Now, because this is a dy problem, everything has to be in terms of y. So go back to your original equations. We gotta do a little bit of work here. This, I'm gonna come down here. I'm going to solve for x. So y minus one equals the square root of x. x is equal to the quantity y minus one squared. I could foil all that out, but I'm not interested right now. Um, I think that's all I need there. So let's do the purple one, head minus feet, the larger one. Well, the head is over here at four, where the feet, the feet are at zero, right? X equals zero is the y-axis, quantity squared. Minus that inside radius, well, that's the pink one, in that blank space here. So that we just rearranged into y minus one squared minus where the feet, they are at zero. And this is a dx problem. Nope, it's not dx. I just goofed, what is it, it's dy. dy problem. Okay, let's rewrite this so it's ready for our calculator. One to three, four minus zero is four, four squared is 16, minus, I goofed on the line up above two, what else did I forget? This is a square. So y minus one squared squared is y minus one to the fourth. And then this is a dy problem. This is the version I would use in my calculator. Math nine, 16 minus. Remember, we can use x. You can do alpha y if you really, really want, but you can use x, just use that button. One to three. So I have 25.6 pi, 25.6 pi. Now, if I multiply that by pi, I've got 80.425. There you go. Those are my two answers for the volume. Now, I skipped right over. What would this look like? Well, here is the y axis. Um, this would look like, I always like talking about this one. Do you recall, if you go to the science museums or um, the Phillipsburg Mall used to have one, but I don't know, that you, there's nothing left in the Peaberg Mall anymore, um, where you put the coin in and it goes round and round and round and round. That's what these remind me of, where the outside is kind of this funnel, sh this cylinder shape, and then the inside is a funnel. The last time I saw one, this doesn't help most of us too much, was the Science Museum in Boston. So it kind of looks like this. So the outside is the cylinder shape and the inside is funnels. So you put that coin in and it spins round and round and round. Or my other example for this would be like a, a tuna can or a can of um, cat food where you could like poke the top down in. That's what else it would look like. I get really cheesy in this unit. All right, example three, find the volume obtained by rotating y equals x squared plus four and y equals two about the x-axis. So let's sketch these again. I've got x squared plus four is a parabola. Let's shift it up four. y equals two is a horizontal line at two. This is y equals two. Uh, we are going about the x-axis. And we were doing this between one and three. 
So here's one and here's three. Now, unfortunately, my graph is not quite big enough. So we'll just do that between one and three. So we're talking about this region in here. And this is rotating around the X axis. So this is definitely a washer because you have a gap in there. At some point, we're not gonna say, hey, use a disc, use a washer. You're gonna have to know, you're gonna have to be able to tell the difference between the two. If you were to sketch this just because, kind of looks like a quate again. I don't know what quates were until I moved to the Lehigh Valley. It's definitely a Lehigh Valley thing. All right, something like this, or some kind of saucer with a, a hole in the center or those short little cones on the soccer field, maybe one, something like that. So your volume is pi from A to B, R squared minus R squared. Now, what kind of partitions? I am perpendicular to the X axis because that's what we're rotating around. So this is a DX problem. A and B on this one are super nice. Those are given to us. They're one and three. I start at one, I end at three. Now, outside radius is from the parabola down to your axis of rotation. So if I'm doing head minus feet, look at this one, long legs, head minus feet. The head is at the parabola, top minus bottom, X squared plus four minus where the feet, those are at zero because the X axis is the line Y equals zero, quantity squared. Minus, let's talk about the inside. The inside is this one, this is little r. The little friend is that empty space. So this would be two minus zero squared in dx. So that's everything done, top minus bottom, top minus bottom. Now, if I clean this up because it's a little bit easier for math nine, it would look like this, x squared plus four squared minus two squared is four dx. Let's clean this up. I've got math nine, x squared plus four quantity squared minus four comma x comma one comma three. So I have 141.7, three repeating. I don't particularly remember that answer. <laughs> I don't have all my answer keys with me, so I can't check, but I think that's pretty good. Um, this would be in terms of pi, but if I multiply it by pi, if you're watching this video, and you try these problems at home and you get a different answer, send me a message so I can fix the video. Because if we were in class together, I'd be asking you to do them on your calculators. But, all right, um, not a perfect example, but this one would probably look like this, where they're getting shorter on one side and then the inside is all the same. All right, I think I've got three more examples. Find the volume obtained by rotating nine minus X squared for zero to three about X equals negative two. So now we're off of that X and Y axis. So things get a little bit different. Nine minus X squared, I'm gonna call this nine. So this is Y equals nine minus X squared between zero and three on the X's about X equals negative two. So let's make this X equals negative two. That's a vertical line. This is X equals negative two. Now, because this isn't drawn to scale, just be careful here. Um, zero and three. So this looks like zero. And this looks like three. Now, I kind of got lucky here. Uh, this should have one other piece of information in it. It should say the Y axis or in the first quadrant or you're missing one. Cause right now my fill bucket would just explode everywhere. So this just should say and y equals zero 
just to kind of cut that off. Um, otherwise, you don't want it to go everywhere. About the line x equals negative 2 for x equals 0 to 3. Now, the reason why I just want you to be careful over here, if you put 3 in place of this x, 3 squared is 9, 9 minus 9 is 0. So this is the point 3, 0. It really does intersect there if you want an idea of what you're looking at. Now, this is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. We're going around negative 2. So these are all horizontal lines. That makes it a dy problem. a to b, r squared minus r squared dy. Here's pi. a and b are the beginning and the end. So where's the beginning? The beginning's down here at 0. Where's the end? It's all the way up here at 9. OK outside radius. So your outside radius goes from here to here. If I look at this with a stick figure, it looks like this. Give me a leg. If I'm talking about an inside radius, it's here. Now, remember, this is a dy problem. So all of the equations, everything has to be in terms of y inside. Zero is a y value, nine is a y value. What's not a y value right now is my function, that parabola. So I need to do a little bit of rearranging here. If y equals nine minus x squared, I need to solve for x. So I'm gonna flip flop the x and the y. So I've got x squared equals nine minus y. And I take the square root. So x is equal to nine minus y in the square root. Just a reminder, it's been a while. If you introduce the square root, you have to do the plus or minus. Now, are we dealing with the positive or the negative? Well, the right-hand side would be the positive square root of 9 minus y. The left-hand side would be the negative. So we are dealing with the positive. So if we're talking about that outside radius, if I do head minus feet, come back to my stick figure, this one, if I do head minus feet, the head is at the square root of nine minus y. Where are the feet? They're over there at negative two, so minus a negative two. He's standing on a chair that's two feet tall. I'm kind of lying down with a pillow that's two feet tall. Quantity squared minus inside radius. So where's the head on the inside radius? That's at zero minus where are the feet? The feet are at negative two again. Kind of ran out of space. And this is a dy problem. So if I clean this up, my volume is pi from zero to nine. This is the square root of nine minus y plus two quantity squared minus, minus a negative two is a positive two squared, two squared dy. I'd even turn this into a four. Now remember what I said earlier, the feet are at the same place. These are both a negative two. They ha have that same center when you rotate it around. All right, so let's do some math nine. Could you do this by hand? Yes, there'd be some really unfortunate foiling out there, um, but it is possible. Square root of 9 minus x plus 2 squared minus 4 comma x comma 0 comma 9. Now again, most of you are using newer calculators, so they're a little bit nicer. But that's what mine looks like. I've got 112.5. And if I multiply that by pi, second function answer times pi, 353.429, three decimal places. All right. Now, I did have a conversation with a student this morning um, that it takes a little while to click. Some of you, you're gonna get this immediately. Some other people, you're gonna have to do a couple days of these for it to click and that's okay. That is 100% okay. Be patient with yourself. All right, so x squared plus two looks like this. 
four minus x squared goes up to four and comes down like this about the line y equals negative three, that's down here. So where does that fill bucket work? That fill bucket's everything in here. Um, if I rotate this around that blue line, this is definitely a washer problem. There's a gap in there and you're perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So your slices look like that. So volume is pi from A to B, big R squared minus little r squared dx. They didn't tell us what A and B are, so we have to set those two equations equal to each other. So x squared plus two is equal to four minus x squared. So if we do a little bit of rearranging here, two x squared is equal to two, x squared is equal to one, x is equal to plus or minus one. So they intersect, my picture is not accurate, negative one and one. So negative one to one are my a and my b. Here's pi. Your outside radius, I'm gonna zoom in here. Your outside radius goes from the outside of that shaded figure all the way down. If I turn this into my stick figure and do head minus feet, your inside radius is here. I'm gonna make this the shorter friend there. So the outside radius goes to that dark green parabola, which is four minus X squared minus where are the feet? The feet are at negative two. And this whole quantity is squared minus little r squared um, is that light green parabola, x squared plus two minus a negative two. Like this. All right, now we're gonna clean all this up. Negative one to one, four minus x squared plus two squared minus x squared plus four squared dx. I'm actually, when I'm gonna put this in my calculator, going to do the four plus two, which is six. Remember those feet are at that same place again, the feet match. They're both at negative two. Oh shoot, that's not a negative two, is it? It's a negative three. Oh my goodness, is it Friday yet? Why did that not erase? I guess we'll just do it like that. See, look at that, I caught my own mistake this time. All right, so this is a plus three and this is two plus three, this is a five. All right, let's try again. Math nine, seven minus X squared quantity squared minus x squared plus five, quantity squared, comma x, comma negative one to one. So I've got 32 pi. And then if I multiply that by pi, 100.53. All right, there you go. One more. These are long lessons. The region between the parabola y equals x squared and the line y equals two x is revolved about x equals two. So y equals x squared is a parabola that looks like this. Y equals two x is a steep line that looks like this. Revolved about x equals two. X equals two is over here. Oh, this is a good one. I remember this one. X equals two. We are talking about, I'm zooming in here, this itty bitty sliver in here. And if you are perpendicular to the axis of rotation, you have horizontal lines. If you have horizontal lines, it's a dy problem. So your volume is pi 
from A to B, capital R squared minus lowercase r squared dy. A and B, let's set these two things equal to each other to see where they intersect. So x squared is equal to 2x. You can divide by x, but remember you can lose an answer, so it's better to factor. So x equals zero and x equals two. So they intersect over here at zero. and two. Now, remember, those are x values that you found, but this is a dy problem. Everything needs to be in y. So how do I go from x's to y's? Well, pick one of the two equations and put them in. So if you put zero in place of x squared, you get zero. If you put zero in place of x, you get zero again. If you put two in place of x squared, you get four. Two in place of x, you get four. So they intersect up here, but I don't want the value of two. I want the value of four. And they intersect down here, but you're taking the y value of zero, not the x value. Okay, outside radius. This time the heads match. Let's see if I can move all this. Shrink, whoops. Technology is great, right? There we go. Squared dy. So when I go to do head minus feet, if you're still on this stick figure game with me, here's the head of the big one. Here's the feet of the larger one. Here's the head of the smaller one. Here are the feet. So if I do head minus feet on the big one, the head is at two, the feet are at that line. Now that line is 2x, y equals 2x, but I don't call it 2x. Running around my house today are people, they don't call me Mrs. Charmley, they call me mom, they call me Kristen. So we need the alternate name for it. You wanna solve for x, x is equal to y over two. For the shorter one, you want two minus, where the feet, the feet are on the parabola, but again, we don't call it x squared. We don't want the x squared name. You want x equals the square root of y, and it would be plus or minus, but we're on the right-hand side, so it's the positive. I forgot a square. So it looks like this. Now, all of this into our math nine and our calculator. Lost my calculator. So we're going to do math nine. I've got two minus x over two quantity squared minus two minus square root of x. Close that, close that squared, comma x comma zero comma four. We've got 2.6 repeating. Volume equals 2.6 repeating pi times second function pi is 8.377. All right, there you go, folks. Wash your problems. They're a little bit tricky, but I hope this is solidifying this process the more of these you do. So once you get to volume, it kind of makes the area a little bit easier. Once you get to washers, it makes the disks a little bit easier. If you're still getting stuck, that's no problem. Mrs. Oaks and I are here to help you out. Schedule a Zoom meeting with either one of us and we'll help you out. Good luck.